That's a band. Yeah, this guy's just he's putting a bad name out there for us. I just got to put it out there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, your life. All right. Welcome to Rashawn Messianic Bible Club and College. I am trying to figure out a way to be more engaged with the students that are taking the class right now. But I see that, you know, it's very easy to do when you are uh, yeah, by yourself. You can take the class at your own pace. And so I, I, I respect that. But I'm, 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 I'm trying to figure out a way for those that would like to um, be more engaged to be able to teach that class and be more engaged with them. So I'll ask my son, because, you know, he's a teenager and he knows how to work all that stuff <laughs> with, you know, um, uh, Facebook and all these things that they have. So we'll see if we can do that. Um, right now, I want us to review yesterday because um, I know that the Lord wants you to be knowledgeable of his plan. All the born again, Bible believing Christians, God wants you to be knowledgeable of his plan. Okay. Um, we have notes today. So if you have, if you are um, uh, at home and I don't, you posted the notes, Pastor Ben, and you want to go on and look at the notes, could I have some of that beautiful air there, Emerson? Chris blessed us with that. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus for Chris yeah, and his <laughs> so, wife. yeah so uh, I want to use it I don't, I don't want to be like the old sand man just sitting here sweating it up <laughs> so we're going to look at some things that um, that uh, um, cause for us to believe that this eclipse is bigger than what we think because Right now, um, in Israel, they are still in the month of Adar, okay? Because, because of how the, the, the calendar works in Israel, okay? Because the spring equinox already happened, okay? Oh. So when the spring equinox happens before the first of Nisan, you can't start the month till after, okay? So since spring has started, and now the um, uh, we're going through the second, the um, uh, the second Adar, um, and it, you know it's not a confusion because it puts it keeps their moon calendar in sequence with our sun calendar, and so that but they still have to stay on God's calendar. So um, God knows both calendars. If you're confused, God isn't pray about it. So um, anyway, we're in the month of Adar. Adar is a very, very important month for uh, the nation of Israel because this is the, the month that they're going to celebrate or they're going to have uh, services concerning Purim and concerning the, um, uh, uh, the escape from Haman and the whole thing that went on with Esther. Now, um, if you do not know, Esther is a 17th book of the Bible. It's one of the three 17 books in the Bible. Esther is the first of those. And Esther um, starts off with what we were talking about last night, the six months. Okay, the six months and seven years, the 180 days, um, whichever way you want to say it. <clears throat> um, for us to ignore it is to ignore a very significant sign in the Bible concerning the last days and what is going on. <clears throat> because I believe that Jesus is going to reign and rule for seven years and six months. Okay? Because I... I don't think that Israel is going to be married and accept Yeshua until after the seven years and six months, okay? And for us to understand that, we have to understand the feast days. We have to understand 
the, the, the structure of the feast days and what happened with the feast days. Because God is telling you, I've already completed half of the plan. The church, all you people are waiting for is the second half of the plan. Um, and the second half of the plan is the, is the last three feast days, okay? So what is the next feast day that, that is going to occur? Then what feast day will occur after that? And what do they tell us about God's plan? Then what is the third feast day, which will be the last tabernacle? What does that tell us about God, okay? And about his plan. Did God already have a plan for his first three feast days? And if I'm sitting here and if I was teaching at a university, I would say someone stand up and tell me what was the plan for God's first feast days? Because he announced the feast days, okay? He announced the feast days to Moses and he announced the feast days in Leviticus. And so now that means God has a plan for his feast days. Now, the first feast day that God tells them to follow is for six days you will work, but on the seventh day you will rest. What is God saying? I have a plan. You're going to, what's the word for, for dress rehearsal? Oh, you're going to, thank you, Pastor Ben is awesome. You're going to have a mikra, and your mikra means a dress rehearsal. So God's saying, from now on, Israel, I want you to do a dress rehearsal. Work for six days. On the seventh day, take the day off. It is a Sabbath to me. It is holy, okay? Now, God did that because the world is going to be on a 6,000 year plan and then God's going to take a thousand years off, meaning that he will be reigning and ruling on the earth. Satan will be locked up for a thousand years while, while Jesus is having a Sabbath, okay? And this is God's plan, but God put it in the first, as the first feast day for them to obey. Now he says, and I want you to obey this one. Go out every year and on the 10th, take a lamb and keep that lamb for four days. On the 14th of Nisan, I want all of the Israelites to go and slaughter them at twilight, not in the morning, wait till twilight. Because when the real lamb comes and he dies on the cross, he's gonna die at twilight. So I want all of you to kill your lambs at twilight, okay? So they do exactly that, okay? So what is God saying? On the 14th of Nisan, 2,000 years or so from now, okay, I'm gonna send my lamb into the world and they're gonna kill him at twilight in the 4,000th year of mankind because the day unto you is a thousand years for me, okay? So in the 4,000th year, Jesus comes into the world. Like, like what's this? this is so crazy. He's born into the world 17 years before you get to 4,000. So when Jesus turns uh, uh, 17 years old, he is eligible to be a sacrificial lamb because yeah. it's the fourth day. You understand? Yeah. So then if you go back and you read Joseph, who is a typology of Jesus, Joseph was 17. And God said, jo Joseph, you're he's, he was 17, and God said, go and, tell, and, and bring back a report on how your brothers are doing. <laughs> so he went to go see what his brothers were doing, and he found his brothers were evil, okay? So his brothers were, were but he, he, he started it at 17. Jesus started his at 17. Rabbi Samuel Judah gave a prophecy starting at 1217. Why? Because the 17 is the most, is this important number. So in 1217, he says, there's gonna be so many Jubilees. And then in 1917, the, they're finally gonna have the Jubilee in, in Israel and it will be declared back in the hands of the Jews. And then it says 50 years after that, 1967, they'll have another Jubilee. And he says that Jubilee will be the last one um, that will lead to the, uh, uh, I mean, will, will, will be 
leading up to the last jubilee that will that will bring the messiah which was 2017 so that means that in 1917 somebody announced hey jerusalem belongs to the jews in, in 1967, Six Day War, Jerusalem belongs to the Jews. In 2017, Jerusalem belongs to the Jews. Now you think, oh, it's just something that happened and God said, I'm orchestrating this. Are you watching? Yeah. Are you watching me control time and everything that's going on in the world? And that's what God is trying to show you. Now we have this thing, we have this eclipse in front of us that's going to happen on the first of Nisan, okay? Or the last day of Adar, because at twilight it'll change, right? So now we have this eclipse that we had one exactly on the 6,000th year of mankind in 2017. Isn't that something? The, the, the nation that God is going to judge Oh my goodness. The Lord said, Get, remind them that after 2020, in 2021, he struck the Washington Monument. Oh, yeah. With electricity. Okay? So God is trying to show the world look, this is the nation that's going to be judged. If you look at the Washington Monument, if you're in a helicopter above the Washington Monument, you know what it, it looks like? It's an all seeing eye. Yeah. So this is a very satanic nation and we have to know and understand that it is, you know? Everybody wants to, Trump to come back and America to be great again. I don't care. I want Jesus to come back and the world to be great again. Yeah. You understand? So, um, all of these things are happening and now we got this eclipse it crosses america on the jubilee year on the 100 and jubilee 120th jubilee year okay seven years later it's now going to make an act on on a city and what's the name of the city emerson uh, uh, raptor, indiana. raptor indiana and uh little little egypt right they're right in the middle there okay so now you got the next uh, comes exactly seven years after the 120th Jubilee. And God says, Noah, it's, it's, your, it's, it's the 600th year, you're 120, but wait seven days, and in seven days, it's gonna start to rain, okay? Everybody's going, oh, watch, nothing happened. Maybe not, but it's too many clues for me to wait around and see if you're actually going to shoot me if you got the gun in your hand. You understand? There's a little bit too much evidence, right? Pastor Ben remembers the the, the dream that oh, the Lord yes. gave me. Yeah, and that, the, the lady sitting there, she waited way too long. Once she saw the gun, she said, start running. But she waited to, for him to load some bullets in. And she went, oh, I wonder what he's doing. And then he loaded the bullets, then he kind of spent the thing, and she was like, <gasps> and I'm like, I'm watching in my, I mean, in my dream, I'm watching, and then he points it at her, and then she goes, what are you going to, and he shoots her. And I went, when should this lady have ran? Okay? When she saw a gun. <laughs> Wait a minute, when I, when I wake up, God goes, when should this lady have ran? I said, as soon as she saw a guy sitting across from her with a gun, okay? I would have got up and moved. But she waited and waited. So God is giving you this thing, okay? Here's 2017. Hey, look, hey, the eclipse. Hey, another one's coming. Ah, look at all this stuff. And you're still waiting around and wondering if you should follow Jesus or not. Or you're waiting around saying, should I, you know, uh, be once saved, always saved or not? You know, all of this stuff that God wants you to repent from, you're not doing it because you believe that, you know, the rapture is not real anyway. So, and it's amazing. The rapture is um, in the sky two times. And we're going to look at the second time that the rapture is in the sky today. And the rapture is in the moon, and the rapture is in the star constellations, and the rapture is in Genesis chapter one, verse six, and the rapture is in uh, Genesis chapter two, 
uh, when, at, when Adam receives his bride. And, you know, I mean, it's just prevalent all through the scripture that God is going to bring a bride to the son. And it's, all, it's prevalent throughout the scripture. And I, I believe God wanted, you know, because a lot of people listen to Chuck Missler. But when Chuck Missler left, people kept lying. You know, you would think that Chuck Missler taught us enough to know that there's a difference between the second coming and the rapture. Right. He made that very clear. Still, after Chuck Missler went to heaven, uh, he probably said, Lord, Lord, what are you going to do about the, the people that are teaching that you're not coming? Well, I'll take care of them. Well, you know, we, we got Pastor Finney, Ben, Pastor Sandy, and some more other watchmen to tell people that the rapture's coming, okay? Right. So now we're letting you know the, the 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 thing that's coming to earth that's going to trigger the end of the book is the rapture and god's invitation to his son's wedding is out yeah. and anybody who we find that will accept the invitation can go okay so this is why we're here we're going to go over some imp more important things I, I i hope i have my hebrew students um, and I hope I have people who want to know the truth, but I am going to make it as plain as possible. Okay. How close are we, Pastor Dan? Oh, we're ready. Are we ready? Okay, let's go. Let's go. Amen. So, uh, Shalom from Shelly in Owasso, Oklahoma. Uh -huh. And shalom from uh, Sensational, from Soldiers of Christ, Pasadena. Hey, sensational. And shalom from Zoe <laughs> joining from Pasadena, California. Hi, Pasadena. Hey, Hi, Pasadena. Zoe. Pastor Benjamin, shalom, everyone. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, My friends. Teresa, uh, Kim, uh, shalom from... And, I apologize in advance, as always, it's from OK Rapids, North Carolina. All right. Uh, your way to say it is the best. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that because that's the best I can do. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And uh, peace, uh, peace and praise God from Ted Bills. Uh, De Deborah. Crawford, good morning, my yeah. S4C family. Praise Jesus today. One day closer to going home. All right, uh, Devorah. Uh, uh, Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. Oregon City, Oregon. Hallelujah. Uh, and I can't pronounce your name, but Shalom from oh, Shalom Q and your wife. Oh, Vanna. Oh, Atlanta, yeah, Atlanta, Georgia. Amen. We have a couple of uh, uh, Spanish members that have told us how to say it. Oh, he broke it down to me like and, just as and, plain as day. And it, it's the problem is that we we don't have any Latin in our country. <laughs> it's like zero. My just won't do that. Buenos <laughs> Dias is as far as it goes. <laughs> but hey, uh, uh, Vanna, and also tell your mother I said hello and God bless her. Amen. And so God bless you, Q and family. And Chris, Chris is her husband. Oh, Chris, Chris, yeah, yeah, oh, okay. yeah, Chris is her husband. Amen. Yeah. Uh, hello from Shea uh, H. Uh, Shalom from Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, uh, Stager, Stager Life. Uh, yay. Uh, I'm so happy you're on. Shalom from Central Valley, California. We're, we're, we're happy we're on too. We're a little late today. Amen. We're, we're so we apologize. I, I was late and I mm -hmm. threw everybody off. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony Gast, blessings from. NZ is that New Zealand? Or NZ is New Zealand. Amen. Down God under. Bless you. I, did, I wonder if that's the guy who came to the church before, because we had some people that came visited from New Zealand on their way back from Hawaii. They stopped by us. Oh, right. I, I wonder. I don't know. It might be different people. Amen. But they gave me a big NZ T-shirt. That's why I know it's me. Amen. Name. Praise God. That might be. Yeah. Amen. And shalom from Jason in Louisville, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Mark Storm, Kentucky. Shalom from Kingsland Terrace, Christ Church, Barbados. Hallelujah. God bless everyone, S4C. Blessings sent, my friends. Jesus is coming from um, Shikshini, Pennsylvania. Hallelujah. That was a mouthful. 
Love you all, Maranatha. <laughs> uh, Shalom from Green Bay, Wisconsin. All right. Missy Wild go. working. Shalom, go. Michael. Go Packers. Go Packers. <laughs> Jeez, hey, it's go Packers. And Shalom from Michael Ophi. In, in, in England, right? Or in is he, England. Yeah, yeah, uh, he's, from, he's in. Uh, Michael Ophi. Uh, Where's his? I'm in traffic. Notes are at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I, I'll go real slow and explain it then, Mike. Hey, man, but I did post the notes on YouTube just a minute ago, and they're on Facebook, so All right. don't run into anybody, but they're, yeah. they're online if keep, you want them. Keep your eye on the road. Keep driving. Keep your eyes safe. Uh, Shalom from Nancy Rivera, uh, Apopka, Florida. Uh, yes. God bless you, uh, S4C. Uh, uh, Lorelai Brown. Uh, Laura, and to all her God's name is children. Laura Line Brown, Laura Line. and From her Chicago, husband name Illinois. is Donnie. Laura Line yeah. and Donnie, Can beautiful we do, couple. We do pretty good for old people with names and and. Places. Well, you know, I'm on Facebook, and then sometimes <laughs> I, I I I call people if I got your number, you know, and like, what are you doing calling me, Pastor Sandy? <laughs> you, you gave me your number. Hey, man. <laughs> Mm. Ricardo, uh, Ricardo Matthew, shalom, Pastor. Hey, Matthew. Ricardo, how you doing? Washington, D.C. is watching and praying. Hallelujah. God bless you. Gabriel Puente, uh, shalom, S4C, brothers Gabriel. and sisters. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. Minister Ryan is on duty with the guard dog. Is he out, out back? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's, he's out there doing his thing. Okay. Uh, shalom from Karen Cox uh, in Pilot. Mountain, North Carolina. Praise God, Karen. God bless you, Karen, from Pilot, Pilot Mountain. A brother Anthony from Phoenix, Pennsylvania. Thanks for Bible study. God bless everyone Hallelujah. in Christ. Blessings from Geraldton, uh, Ontario, Canada. That's from Mike Maggie. Amen. And Zach Ian, shalom from Buffalo, New York. I bet you it's cold up there. Mm -hmm. uh, Graciela, uh, Wales, blessings from Argentina. Uh, Elaine Wilmer, uh, shalom from Rassong, Wisconsin. Wisconsin? I'm sorry, Racine, Wisconsin. Okay. Listening in while working. It's Hallelujah. great to hear the Holy Word. Amen. Hallelujah. God is awesome. And Minister Pastor, uh, uh, Pastor Brandon, he's probably at hey, work Pastor doing Brandon. what he do, representing the people of God. What Amen. a good brother. Greetings, family. And Sue, he's an awesome pastor, and his yeah. wife, and his uh -huh. little boy. He, his mom follows us, too. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that woman knows the yeah. Bible, too. Uh -huh. Amen. Sue, uh, East Yorkshire, United Kingdom. Uh, shalom, dear... Uh, suited and booted soldiers. Amen. I love it, Sue. Suited and booted. Amen. Uh, from uh, Arkansas. Amen. Shalom from Arkansas. Shalom from Waldorf, Maryland. Hey, Troy. Amen. And what else we got? Just in case my laptop cuts off, I'm also watching. <laughs> I'm also watching on TV. Uh, amen. God bless you. you Tech key people. <laughs> Richard Wangler, uh, Shalom. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm laughing because, you know, people got to say, I'm watching you on a TV. Like, you know, because How weird everybody is else is like, oh, I'm on my computer. Right, I'm, I'm on my line. phone. Yeah. Watching you. I'm watching you on TV. I'm going old school. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That's great. Amen. Richard Cooper, uh, City, Florida. Uh, Shalom. Vicky D. In hey, Vicky West D. Mid uh, West Hampton, New Jersey. Hallelujah. We got a lot of Jersey people. Mm -hmm. A lot of Jersey people. So, Amen. I, Dennis from, or Dennis, or Denise, I think it's Dennis, uh, from Orlando, Florida. Blessings to my family. Susan. Luis Marino, shalom from Westwood, Miami. Hallelujah. Justin Hyde from, okay, from, oh, I think he's from Ohio, but uh, I'm not sure of the spelling there. Uh, shalom from Oregon Coast. Uh, hi, Lords J. Shalom from Felicia in Niles, Michigan. Hey, Felicia. Shalom from Cape Town, South Africa. Mandy Hallelujah. said, I made 
did. Yes, you did, Hallelujah. man. You made it. Love South you, Africa. pastors. Ryan S for C. Ryan from the parking lot. <laughs> Ryan got issues. <laughs> He just wanted to hear from the parking lot. Howdy, Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Hi, Robert. Uh, greetings from Owasso, I mean, Owasso, Ontario, Canada. Hallelujah. Uh, it's pronounced uh, L-E-R. Pastor mm -hmm. Ben, God bless you. Yeah. I'm sure I'll forget. Is that, is that the Canada? I think so, okay. yeah. And oh, in Toronto, Canada. really be the forgotten real good by next week. Uh -huh. I'm at work. Man. My boss asks what I'm watching. Laugh so loud. Glad you to be able to watch. Lie. Amen. Bring your, bring your boss to the gospel. Oh, Amen. Man. And uh, Deanna Maria Spokane, Washington, and Darrell uh, Sims from Central Texas. Uh, greetings from Nottington, Nottington, England, the bold 200. God bless everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. Remind me, Pastor Ben, to read um, Matthew chapter 22 after I pray in, okay? Amen. Because the Lord told me I want you to start there. So, um, Emerson, remind me to remind Pastor Sandy. To oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Me. Emerson's younger okay. than you. Emerson, you remind the old guy, and then the old guy will remind me. All right. I don't know who you thought he was talking Okay, about. yeah, I forgot, Pastor Dan. I, you know, you look so young. You got all that hair. On, you got hair on your head, and it's still black. So it, it, it throws me off every now and then. All right, let's pray in, and then let's get started. All right. Avanu shaba shabaim yi kadeshim ha. Tavol melhutecha yi aserotsancha. Be aret ke asher ne asa be shamaim. Telano hayon lechem hukenu. U selaglano ed ash metenu. Ke asher solekem anach nule asher ash melano. Ti vial tevienu le de masa. Ke im hazilano min hara, kilaha hamamlaka, ve hagivara, ve hatif erit, leola me, leola mim, amen. Be hashem yeshua hamashir kanachnu mi pelalim, and let's get started. Yes. Let's see. All right. Amen. So, yeshua hashem mi ala kol shem, um, let's. Uh, get started here, and I'm going to start in Matthew chapter 22, and God will tell me why when I get there, but I know when the Lord speaks to me, and I have learned to obey when God speaks to me. I've, I've learned that. So, you know, I used to be, uh, well, you know, if I, no, <laughs> I just do it now. Okay, so it says, Jesus spoke to them in a parable saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding for his son. He sent his servant to those who had been invited to the banquet and to tell them to come, but they refused. Then he sent some of his servants and, and said, tell those whom uh, who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen, my fattened cattle have been butchered and uh, uh, everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off one to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burnt their city. That happened in 70 AD. So just giving you a hint of who the disobedient people who didn't want to come were, okay? And so he burnt their city in 70 AD. And he says, then he said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. Go tell, go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servant went out 
uh, into the street and gathered all the people they could find, both good and bad. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. Wow, I like that. The, 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 the invitation was not on your good or bad merits, right. but you, you accept the invitation. But now the rest of this tells us that even though you accepted the invitation, you now have a responsibility. Yeah. And the Lord says, now this is where I wanted you to stop and then finish it after you say this. He invites good and bad people to the wedding banquet. Yes. Anyone can accept Christ. After a person would accept an invitation from a king in these days, the king would give them a wedding garment. Yes. The garment was a, a specially designed garment to let people know that you have been invited to the king's banquet. Yes. When you come to the banquet, you are required by the king to wear the garment that the king issued to you. Yes. Okay? So even though you're good or bad and you accept it, you're also accepting the qualification when you go inside that banquet to have this garment on. Yes. Okay? I wanted you to know that because some people accept Christ, but then they try to get inside the banquet and they don't have the Holy Spirit. You understand? But they don't have the clothing on. Okay? And it says, verse 11, but when the king came uh, in to see the guest, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. Friend, he asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? And the man was speechless. The king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many have in, been invited, but few are chosen. The Jews are chosen. Yes. You got in by invitation. So therefore, you're supposed to have on the garment. Yes. When Christ comes back to rescue Israel, he's going to give them a garment. Because yes. now they will be clothed with the Holy Spirit. You understand? Mm -hmm. But you cannot get into the banquet and don't try to get into the banquet without the Holy Spirit. Amen. What destroys the Holy Spirit? Continual sin. Yes. Hallelujah. God is like, I have changed your message. Here we go. Go to Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 10. It says here in chapter 10, I looked and I saw uh, the likeness of a throne and a sapphire. You know what? You can't start this here because it actually starts in the in nine, which is the judgment, because God announces the judgment in nine. Now, when God announces this judgment, the temple is standing. Yes. Do you understand that? The Spirit of God is living inside the Kadosh Kadoshim, in the Holy of Holies. Yes. Okay? Yet God is unpleased with what is going on inside the temple. Now, everyone says, well, there's no temple standing today. Wrong. The body of Christ is the temple of yes. God. Yes. He is ministering inside of his temple or his temples because everyone who receives the spirit is, is has the ability to minister the gospel to someone else. Amen. So God is serving inside the temple yes. of your body. The command for every priest that works inside the temple is to keep a perpetual fire burning inside the temple. Yes. If I see that your light is gone out, and if the high priest comes, which is Jesus Christ, comes and finds out that your light has gone out, 
It says, they will, he will set you on fire. Do you understand? Yes. So I'm a high priest and you're a priest inside the temple. And you got a, 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 a lamp up there that God has commanded that must perpetually burn day and night. So much that he keeps priests on duty 24 hours. Okay? It's morning time. It's my turn to serve in the temple and keep the light. It's my turn. So every priest, but now every now and then, the high priest would walk through the temple yeah. to make sure that you're paying attention to the light. So if he comes through and you let the light go out, out because you fell asleep. He set you on fire yeah. and now you're trying to strip off your burning clothes and you're found shamefully naked. Amen. Why? Because you did not obey what God told you to do. Keep the light burning, okay? So, this is what's going on inside the temple. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. It says in chapter nine, then I heard him call out in a loud voice, bring the guards of the city here, uh, each with a weapon in his hand. And I saw six men coming from uh, uh, the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each with a deadly weapon in his hand. With them was a man clothed in linen who had a riding kit in his side. They came in and stood beside the bronze altar. What is bronze in the Bible? Judgment. Judgment. He's letting you know we're standing by the bronze altar because judgment is about to happen. Do you see Jesus in, in Revelation um, uh, uh, whose hair is white as wool, his purity as a lamb, right? right. But his feet are bronze. Why are his feet bronze? Judgment is about to land on yeah. the earth. You understand? They're not brown because he's a black guy. <laughs> Stupid. These black Hebrew kids, they, these black Hebrew are like to get me mad. Like, that's not why. Anyway, let's get back to this. So now they're in here and, and they're standing before the bronze. And he says, Now the glory of God of Israel went up from above the cherubim where it had been. The glory of God went above the cherubim, the cherubim where it had been, because the glory of God was sitting inside the temple, and moved to the threshold of the temple. The Lord called to the man clothed in linen, who had the writing kit at his side, and said to him, go throughout the city of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the forehead of those who grieve and lament over the detestable things that are done in it. So he says, go out there to the Christians who are living for me, who are detested by the bad things that are going on inside the temple. So I'm going out and I'm looking for people who are, who are saying, you know what? This Benny Hinn stuff and this T.D. Jake stuff, this is disgusting yeah. and, and horrible. And I'm looking for people who are disgusted yeah. by what's going on inside the church. That's what he's looking for. And because there are some people that want to live for Christ and not live for money and church and popularity, right? Okay, so this is his instruction from God. Go through the city of Jerusalem and mark the forehead of those who, who lament over the testable things of the temple. As I, as I listen, he said to the other fellow, uh, uh, he, he said to the others, follow him through the city and kill without showing mercy or compassion, slaughter old men, young men, maiden, women, and children, but do not touch anyone who has the mark begin at the sanctuary so they began with the elders who were in front of the temple then he said to them uh then he said to them defile uh, the temple and fill the court with the slain go uh, so they went out and began killing throughout the city while they were killing 
um, uh, and I was uh, uh, left alone, I fell face down crying out, oh, sovereign Lord, are you going to destroy the entire remnant of Israel in the outpouring of your wrath on Jerusalem? And he answered me, the sins of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great. And the land is full of bloodshed and the city is full of injustice. They say the Lord has forsaken the land. The Lord does not see. So I will not look on them with pity or spare them, but I will bring down on their own heads what they have done. Then the man in the linen with the writing kit at the side brought back the word saying, I have done as you command. Wow. Judgment fell on the church in the sanctuary first. You understand? Now, nobody wants to believe that the Bible is full of prophecy. This event is happening right now today because the temple that is on the earth is defiled. And what temple is that? Those who say we belong to the church. You do not belong to the church. You are a tear. You are not a wheat. Okay. And God knows the difference between those who are serving and those who are not serving, who those who love him and those who are not loving him. Those who use the platform of Christianity to make money and take advantage of people over those who just want to serve God. God knows the difference yes. and he's disgusted with it. So when he sends judgment upon the earth and, and you find that a lot of people who were in the congregation are still there with wrong attitudes. You know, there are people that are real estate salesmen who only go to church because they can conjure up business yep. there. Yep. It has nothing to do with Jesus. You understand? They're there to give out cards. You understand? There are people who accepted Jesus Christ, went to Bible school, learned an alternative doctrine, yeah. was given a church and wealth, and they are holding on to that false doctrine because of the money. Amen. You understand? Yes, sir. God knows this. And judgment is coming without pity. You understand? Wow. See, now, now, see, now you hear what it said? It said, without pity. Men, women, children, oh, yeah, okay. And we go, oh, oh, God is so wrong. He's so wrong. Because we, God is love, you know? And in him is love and love all the way through. Well, you're gonna hit a bone because that bone is judgment. You understand? <laughs> that, that meat has bones in it and it's called judgment, okay? So do not think that God is not also a judge. Yes, and so is. when you treat the gospel as if God has no judgment and that you can do whatever you want as long as you say you're a Christian, you are putting yourself in danger. Last night I was showing you why you're in danger. You're in danger because we're in spring, yes. six months before the day of atonement, six months before the day of atonement six months before they declare to the world peace for seven years you are in this world and you have the opportunity to leave in christ but if you don't if you don't leave don't expect for to meet the same uh person in judgment because grace has been removed okay you can believe in Christ, but the people that are here will not accept your Christianity. You understand? There will be no <laughs> preaching of the gospel. <coughs> False doctrine. You understand? People are getting their heads cut off because they say Jesus is Lord. You understand? So the world is about to enter into another realm and this realm is called tribulation and it begins when the church leaves. The 70th week of Daniel doesn't begin until six months after. 
and you're in the spring, you're at the you're at the starting line. OK. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Praise the Lord. Let me see. Glory depart from. OK. I just wanted to to uh, let you know this in chapter 10. I'll start at verse three. Chapter 10, of, chapter 10 of Ezekiel, it says, Now the cherubim was standing on the south side of the temple when the man went in, and a cloud filled the inner court. The glory of the Lord rose from above the cherub, cherub and moved to the threshold of the temple. The cloud filled the temple in the court, uh, was full of the radiance of God's glory. Where is God's glory at now? It's in the court. He's come out of the temple. He's now in the court. The second, it says, the sound of the wings of the cherubim could be heard as far away as the outer court and the voice of God Almighty when he speaks. So the spirit of God has moved from the Kadosh Kadoshim to the outer court. Yeah. It's no longer inside that temple. Sin causes the spirit of God to move. Amen. Persistent sin causes the spirit of God to move. Listen how long this was going on. This was going on in the temple so long, people were disgusted and God was like, enough's enough. Right. <laughs> how long can I sin before God judges me? Well, that's a dumb question by a dumb person. You understand? Stop it. Stop doing what you're doing and repent. Because you don't know when judgment is going to fall because you don't know when the day that the trumpet will blow. OK, so now is the time to repent and give your life back to Christ Amen. or give your life to Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I did what the Lord asked me to do. And now he said I can get back to mine, <laughs> which is his. OK, now <clears throat> here we are six months before um the day of atonement yom, yom kippur about six months we're not really six months yet we're still in the month of adar how many times do you think adar is mentioned in the book of esther how many times eight new beginning okay um what do you think adar means in hebrew what about the glorious appearing adar means glorious you understand? Yeah. So in the month of the glorious appearing is Adar. You understand? Yeah. So God is showing you something that is happening in the book of Esther. And it begins at the very beginning when you begin to uh, read Esther. And I'm going to go to the book of Esther because I'm not there. I'm going backwards. That's the 20th book. 19th book, Psalms, and wow, I didn't know what Job is the 18th book, and then Esther is the 17th book. Let's go. <clears throat> I want us to look at this very carefully because here we go with God telling us something that he's already told us in the book of Samuel. David will reign for seven years and six months. Wait a minute, I thought the tribulation only lasts for seven years. No, when Jesus becomes king, he will be king over the Gentile nations and over others and not Israel for seven years and six months, okay? <clears throat> Where does this six months come in? Because we know that after the covenant is signed, that'll start the 70 years of, Dan, of, uh, of the 70th year of Daniel. Correct. Okay, what is this six months, Lord? I'm trying to let you know that the church is gonna leave six months before the covenant is signed. You understand? So here we are, <clears throat> we're in the book of Esther. And it begins by saying, this is what happened during the time of Xerxes. Xerxes who ruled over 127 provinces. Now, stop because we're students. When you read a number in the Bible, what's the first thing you're supposed to do? 
Go and find out what the number means. If you read 153 fish, your job is to go find out why 153 fish. Amen. You understand? Yes. Because God is putting a certain number there to let you know. When you read that there are 276 souls that were on board with Peter when they finally got to Malt, you got to go look up what 276 is. Because it might tell you that this is a boat rescue just like the ark and the exact number of the ark might be there. You understand? So if I look at, at 127 provinces, it says 127 is the numerical value for the king of glory. Yes. It is the numerical value for the heart of the king. It is the numerical value of the holy Lord God. Yes. You understand? Yes. So here we are, and we are um, talking about 127 provinces. Now, it gets funnier than this because that has Hebrew meaning. The, the, the king of glory, 127, and then it says, stretching from India to Cush. At that time, King Xerxes reigned from his royal throne in the citadel of Susha. I dare you to look up Susha. You're going to find out Susha is no more than the Star of David in blue and white. Do you understand? Susha is, is a province that reigned under the, 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 the lily plant and, the, and, and blue and white was the colors. Okay? So are we talking about a Gentile king? Why is he doing all this Jewish stuff? Because the author of the book is telling you a story about him. He's just using this guy in the in the process. Okay, Amen. so here Esther, what? Esther chapter one, and I just we're, we're, we're now uh, 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 verse three. Okay, all right, verse two. At that time, the king of Jersey reigned in the royal throne in the citadel of Susha. In the third year of his reign, oh my goodness! Wait a minute. Are we, let's see, Jesus, 1,000, 2,000. After we passed 2017, we were on the third day. See, we're early morning on the third day. Yes. Okay, so in the third day of Jesus' reign, guess what he decides to do? Watch this. It says, at that time, he reigned in the royal throne in Citadel, and on the third year of his reign, he gave a banquet for all his nobles and officials, the military leaders of, of Persia, Media, the princes, and the nobles of the province were present. For a full 180 days, he displayed the vast wealth of his kingdom and the splendor and the glory of his majesty. When these days were over, the king gave a banquet lasting seven days in the enclosed uh, garden of the king's palace for all the people uh, uh, from the least to the greatest. Did, where did we read that from? Go out and find good or bad. From the least, and in, 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 in 25 it says, from the least to the greatest, everybody that had been there from the least to the greatest were in the citadel of susha of blue and white star of david okay i got the notes i'll send i'll, I'll, I'll post them today on on youtube okay i got the notes citadel susha is no more than the image of israel today okay now it says here the garden had hangings of white and blue Wow, I wonder why they chose white and blue. It says, fastening with the cords of white linen, purple material, and silver rings. Oh, God. All of this means something, and I don't want to stop and, and go through all of this. But the purple is for royalty. The silver is for blood. The blood that was shed for those who were there. Okay? On marble pillars. The pillars are the 120, the church. There were couches of gold and silver and mosaic pavements of porphyry, marble, mother of pearl, and other costly stones. 
wine was served in, in, in goblets uh, of gold, each one different from the other. And the royal wine was in abundance in keeping with the king's liberality. By the king's command, each guest was allowed to drink in his own way for the king instructed uh, all the wine stewards to serve each man as he wished. That's the end, chapter eight. So he tells you, this is how the party is going, okay? Each goblet, each person had an individual cup that was designed specifically for that person. Did you know that? In gold, they're like, oh, you have a special design cup just for you for this one. Now, somebody goes, oh, well, what is this, all this drinking? People going to be drunk? Oh. You will not be in your normal body. Amen. Okay, first of all, it's your normal body that can't take alcohol. And anyway, we don't know what wine tastes like in heaven. Amen. Jesus made a little bit and people went crazy. <laughs> Wow, some people serve the good stuff last, but you, you've brought out the good stuff right now. You know what I mean? So you don't know what it's going to be, but you know that the banquet is being set up. Yeah. Now, do we know of any other kings or any other Jewish kings or Jewish strongmen that were preparing food for their banquet? Samson and who else? When the seven got to shore and saw Jesus oh, yeah. after the 153 yeah. fish, Jesus was already cooking. Yeah. So he, they're letting you know two times it's the responsibility of the bridegroom to prepare the yeah. banquet for the bride. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Woo, I'm loving this, this, this Bible study and I've not even started yet. Okay. So that's the beginning of Esther, okay? Esther just happens to have seven chamber, chamberlains, okay? The um, Mehuman, Bis, uh, Bista, uh, Harbanon, uh, uh, Begata, uh, Abagata, and Zathar, and, uh, and Karsus. So I don't know how bad I mingled those, but let me tell you, it just happens to be seven. Wow. It couldn't be eight. No, there's only seven churches. Yeah. So I, because it's only seven, because I want you to know this is about the seven. Yeah. It's not about the 12. The banquet is about what? The seven. All right. We'll get to the 12 later. Because remember, he took up 12 baskets of, of fig, I mean, of, of leftovers, right. and he took up seven baskets. So he's letting you know there's two rescues that are going to happen. OK, this is about the seven. So the sixth month is about what? It's about the seven. Yes. Oh my goodness. Here we are. Um, page two of your notes. Purim, a lesser a Jewish festival held in the spring in the 14th and 15th day of Adar to commemorate the defeat of, of, of Haman, uh, a plot to murder the Jews as recorded in the book of Esther. Okay, March 6th and 7th is not Purim. This notes were taken a long time ago. And I mean, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, maybe a year or two years ago when Purim had come around, but I had done this study, okay? Hadassah, who is this new beautiful bride, um, is her, her name means a myrtle tree, okay? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tree in Israel, it's purple, red, pink, flowers on it. So it's an absolutely beautiful tree. Esther means hidden in Hebrew. Yeah. Esther to the people in that province was a was Venus, a star which they worshiped. OK, so when they gave her the name Esther, they were giving her the name Esther in accordance to the goddess that they worshiped. Yeah. But God was giving her the name Esther because in her book is hidden some things that you need to know yeah. that's coming. OK, Amen. and the name of God is not prevalent in the book of Esther to the point where when they're, they're sitting there trying to pick, figure out which books to put in the book and which books to take out, they said, let's leave out Esther because it doesn't mention God. And they're true. It's, it doesn't if you see. Only, but if you look at 
um, in the in the codes of, of God's writing, you'll see that Elohim is there, Yahweh is there, all of these are there, and we'll get to that and I'll, I'll let you know. Okay, so now it says here, um, all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, have brought down the high tree the high, and, and have exalted the low tree. Who's the high tree? Israel. Who's the low tree? Gentiles. I have dried up the green tree, Israel, and have made the dry tree to flourish, the Gentiles. Okay, so you have Israel and you have the Gentile trees, but God is making the Gentile tree flourish and he's caused the green tree to dry up. I, the Lord, have spoken and have, and have done it. What has he done? Since Israel wasn't ready for the, for the wedding feast, he's now gone to the Gentiles and the Gentiles are believing the gospel like crazy. Okay? Now, um, the name uh, Adar is taken from Titus chapter 2, verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious, the Adar appearance of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Isn't that something? That God would put Adar right there, yeah. okay? Now, it says here, the name of God, uh, 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 the name of God eight times, Adar means glorious, it's eight times there, and Adar is in the first, I just put it there, um, Esther chapter two, we have um, uh, uh, Esther put there. So um, let's go to page three of our notes. Okay. The name of God appears as an acrostic. Uh, the the, the Tatragrammaton four times as Yahweh. So Yahweh appears in Esther four times. Um, Ichia, I am, appears one time. Okay, Mashiach appears one time, and Yeshua also appears one time, and El Shaddai also appears one time in the book of Esther. So for all the people that say the God is not in Esther, it's in there, but it's in the skipped sequences of God, of how God does it, okay? Uh, because if you read uh, Isaiah 53, you won't see my name is Yeshua, unless you do the acrostic with the, with, with the letters, okay? That's, uh, come on, you guys, you, you know where we're at in God. We're, with, we're, we're learning from the author. We're not, we didn't go to uh, Texas Bible School, Amen. okay? It says, uh, note that water is the opening reoccurrent theme of Isaiah 55. And that Hebrew word, hayam, has a numerical value of 55 as well and is used in spelling of exactly two times in the correct story, uh, 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 in the creation story, and the sections of which we will be turning to shortly. So the word yam, he divided the, the waters from the waters in, in, in Genesis chapter one, and God divided the waters from the waters, okay? Now, when we get to when we get to um, Psalms chapter 117, Psalm chapter 117 divides the Bible in half like water, okay? Yeah. The living water, the word of God has been divided, okay? And the center verse is, the center chapter is 117. 117 in Hebrew means what it means my close and intimate friend yeah. okay so 117 has a very important thing god is telling you at one time he's going to divide the water who divided the water moses divided the water to bring the jews out of egypt the hebrews out of egypt joshua divided the waters to take them over into the promised land okay now in this chapter 17, it tells you, as our picture is on the back, it says, call Goim. It says, all you Gentiles praise his name. 
not all of you Israelites, not all of the Hebrew, it says all you goim. The goim are the Gentile nations, praise ye the Lord. Where? In the middle of the divide. Yes. You understand? How deep can we go? So the numerical value of Psalms 117 is 2294, which is only, you only see it again when Kof and Lamed divide in Psalms 119, the last verse and the first verse talking about the going up and the taking up of the, of the church into heaven. Yes. And it's two verses, but they divide two letters. The Kof, which is the crowning glory, and is the first Safit letter that goes down. And then the next one, and so the, the dividing is telling you this is where the rescue happens at the dividing of the water, okay? But it doesn't say this dividing is going to bring out the Jewish people. This says this dividing is going to bring out the going, the, the Gentile people, you understand? So there is a division of the water that's going to happen in the world. Nation, people, and tongues will be taken above the water. Nation, people, and tongues will be left below the, below the sky. And that's when judgment will begin, okay? Please understand, people, God is trying to speak to you through his word. Yeah. He's telling you, I've already set out the platform. I've already set the narrative, okay? I've already done it numerically, by word, and by prophecy. It's all there for you to see. The star constellations are there for you to see. Is the rapture in heaven? Yes, in the star constellation of what we call Pisces. And what is Pisces? What is Pisces is the image of two fish going in separate directions. Yeah. The 153, the sons of God are going up and the other fish is going down. They're separated. Yeah. This particular uh, constellation is in the month of Adar. You understand? Thank you. This particular constellation is in the month of Adar. What does the constellation look like? Because Aries looks like a lamb. They made a god out of it in Egypt. Yeah. What does the constellation of, of the, the, the Pisces look as the, as the Dacons that are around it? Well, it's a woman in chains at first. And then the second part of the constellation is a woman with a crown on her head yes. and no chains. And she's now in heaven and she's seated with a crown on her head. Yes. Okay? Yes. That's in your star constellation. So even in the star constellations, which is the first word of God, was the star constellation. Yes. It's telling you the rapture is already there. Not only was it in the moon of the rotation of the moon, but it's also in the constellation of what we call Pisces because it has to do with fish, 153. Amen. Okay. Um, let me see, I might be done. Oh, we have to go to page five. Oh, my goodness. You said I have 10 minutes? Well, I had 10 minutes, right? <laughs> okay. We're going to go right now to John chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. Okay? And we see, and then, because this is it, y'all. This is what I wanted to show you guys last night. Because here is Jesus. And the Lord said, you forgot one scripture Sunday. I said, what scripture? He said, I told the disciples, the next time we drink a Passover wine, we'll be in heaven. Or he says, the next time we do this, well, we take wine. He says, I will not do it again with you until we do this in heaven, in my father's kingdom. Yes. What, what wine were they, taste, were they drinking? They were drinking the Passover wine. Had the Passover come yet? No, because I mean, it was the morning. It was, it was going to be in that day, but the, the, the crucifixion hasn't happened. But they're taking the Passover wine. Yes. He says, we won't do this again until we do it in heaven. When, you mean at Passover? Okay. So let's see if there's a wedding that happens before Passover. Where are you reading, Pastor? I'm in uh, John chapter 2, 
the Gospel of John, chapter 2. And it says, ooh, just like Esther, look. Verse 1. Yes. On the third day, a wedding took place in Canaan. Jesus has been gone one year after 2017 was the end of two days. And now we're on the third day. Okay? So now we're on the third day. On the third day, there was a wedding in, 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 uh, uh, that took place in Cana of Galilee. Galgal, -gal, which is, means the same as the other verse that meant the end of the story. It's the end of the wheel, okay? And it says, Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Dear woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my time has not yet come. His mother said to him, do, to, uh, to the service, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water pots. Now, in the movie, The Passion, or, or whatever, the, 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 the Christian movie that they have out now, me and Drea went to see it before we found out the whole, all the whole uh, uh, thing of the, the movie. But we found out because the Jewish people are the writers in the movie. So they come and they say, we were going to uh, we were going to have the wedding last week, but she had she was pregnant and we were waiting for after the birth. OK, that explains why the six pots are there, because those are ceremonial washing pots for for when a, a woman has a child. Yes. Wait a minute. So who is this child that is born at the wedding? Who's who's birthed out of the world? And the child was harpazoed up to God, uh -huh. birthed out of the world. Okay, watch this. I wish I could talk to somebody. It says, his mother said to the servants, do whatever, nearby took six water pots, the kind used for the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. So he lets you know it's 20 to 30 gallons to make sure you do what? We got to study. We got to calculate 20 and we got to calculate 30 times 6. 20 times 6 is 120, which is the, the congregation or the pillars that were pushed out by Samson to bring down judgment. Yeah. 6 times 30 is 180, which means to depart, but it's the Hebrew word nosia, which means not by walking. It's by any other means, but it can't be. The leket means to walk. But if you, if you know siya, anaknu no siya le Tel Aviv, that means did you take the train? Did you take a plane? But you could not have walked if you know siya. No siya means what? To travel, to leave, to depart, but not by foot. Okay? So those are the two things that he's telling you that the wedding happened. If you continued in this story, you'll find out after they left, they took a walk and they were on their way to Jerusalem because it was not Passover yet. So it wasn't even the 14th of Nisan and there was a wedding going on. I'm done. You, you, you be ready, okay? I'm not gonna sit here and watch this eclipse and watch this six month period and watch Adar and watch all of this happen and not be praying for people and out trying to witness and get people saved and ready for the coming of Christ and not his coming to the earth down to a cloud to pull Amen. us up. Praise God. Amen. 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 What time is it, Pastor Sandy? It is man le alot with shalot. And it is time for questions and answers. I need to read a note on the bed, shalot. Amen. All right, do you need to get you some OJ or? Um, I had, I had a water, I thought, but I don't have a water. Uh, okay. Toss me one. I will be Play football, I won't drop it. Well, I haven't played football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a beautiful dog, though. I love real dogs. Those little bitty pooch dogs, I just can't get into them. <laughs> it's like holding a rat or, 
or, or, or, or little, what are those things, the hamsters that run through right. the thing? They're like little hamsters. Yeah, three guys just set up and play some music right here, so I kicked them out. Oh, that's what the noise was we heard. Well, they, they saw her and said, have a good day. Oh, wow. Oh, you guys. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, I hope that wasn't on camera. Yeah. I caught it and did my own dance. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> it's a replay. <laughs> All right. So we got a couple questions up here. Okay. I need the Rick. I know that we shall. Lot Hayon. Peach Viri Yeshua. Brukoti. Yuha. Hacham Elohim. Bless me with your knowledge, Lord God. Amen. Listen. Okay, Pastor Sandy. So, first question. Welcome to Soldiers for Christ. <laughs> Okay, so uh, first question is, has Pastor Sandy or Pastor Ben traveled to Israel? I have not traveled to Israel. I have not, I have not traveled to Israel. Amen. And, uh, uh, Emerson, did you go to Israel? My wife and daughter. His wife and daughter went, but they left Emerson at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Amen. Uh, this is from Richard. Question, who is Apollyon of Revelation uh, Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. Some people are saying that it is translated from Greek as Satan. It is. Yeah, that's what I thought. We don't. Strong concordance. Yes. Uh, or, okay, so it is. Yeah, Apollyon is, is the god of destruction or, or, uh, or uh, uh, Satan. So, and of course, that's why they name the shuttle 13 yeah. a Apollo, Apollo, right? Or so, Apollyon yeah, or, or you're going to have Columbia, you know, whatever their gods are, yeah. you know, District of Columbus, the, 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 the female goddess. So you're going to have, they're just honoring their gods. So when they did Apollo 13, mm -hmm. there was to honor Satan. And they're going to do this. Thing. Amen. All right. So, um, my sister and I are fighting a virus or something. We know to pray for healing in the name of Jesus. What should we do when, uh, when that hasn't worked yet? Just wait, because it is going to work. Right. And then say, I, I, if I was you, I'd write down my plans of what songs I'm going to praise to God when I'm completely healthy and, and feeling good again. That's good. So. I always, I always pray with expectation. I don't pray wondering if God hears me, if he's going to answer. He will answer and you will be healed. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying right now, Father God, in the name of your son, yes. Jesus Christ, uh, to heal them, to give them strength, yes. to restore them completely in their bodies, Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. And it will happen. Amen. Um, when when you say we are on the early hour, we are on the early hours of the third day, and God says the evening and the morning is the day. Which calendar are you referring to? Calend I'm, I'm referring to God's calendar. God says a day unto Him is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. When uh, uh, it says early in the morning. It says uh, there's some scriptures that says early in the morning, joy comes in the morning, right? Uh -huh. So morning is just like the break of that of the sun coming up on that day. But the day begins. So for God, a thousand years is a day. When you get to a thousand and one, a thousand and two, you're actually on the second day. You understand? Because you're going into the two thousand count. So anything after the thousand becomes early morning on the next day or early on the next day. Um, so when we got to 2017, it was the 6,000th year. 2018 was 6,001, 2019, 6,002. So we've been counting, we're seven days past the 6,000. So we are early morning on the sixth day. Amen, okay? amen. All right, so, um, uh, Ted needs a early morning after the sixth day. Sorry, huh? yeah, 
early morning after the sixth day. Amen. Okay. Uh, Ted is asking for some clarification of Matthew 27 and 53, uh, because okay. some YouTube apostates <laughs> uh -huh. are saying that when the resurrection of the dead in Christ happens, the resurrected will go into cities and witness before witness before ascending. No. Yeah, right. That's this. You know that you're not allowed to make up your own story in the Bible, okay? When he resurrected those, first the first fruit came out of the, out of the ground. Now there are other scriptures that tell you what Christ did with those that were brought out of Hades at that time, okay? Or the paradise at that time, because they were, Hades is on this side and paradise is on this side. It says he led them out as a train into, the, into, the, into his glory. He didn't lead them out as a train into the city of Jerusalem to go and talk to people. <laughs> you had 12 disciples that were preaching the gospel they didn't need to hear from resurrected people right. who had been waiting to see the glory of God because they were waiting on the Messiah to come and die on the cross and come down and release them from paradise and go to heaven. And God says he led the captivity captive, yes. meaning that he led those who were captive in paradise out into the glory of God yes. in the kingdom. Yes. So, you know, but let, let me tell you, the Lord already told me, keep telling the truth. Because liars never stop lying. Never stop. Even in hell, they'll still be lying. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that something? I didn't do anything. Sure. <laughs> uh, am I missing something? If the sun and the moon travel east to west across the sky on the same path, how can there be a shadow that runs in a north to south path, path as is expected? Um, you got to do some scientific research for yourself on that. I have no idea. All I know is that the sun and the moon are perfectly separated uh, from each other that it can produce an eclipse. Do you know how perfect it? Because one of them is way bigger than the other, yeah, right? That's true. So for it to it to be a to be able to block out the whole thing, it has to be perfectly in dimensions. Uh, for it to move in front of and actually block it. So God worked that out. So I don't know scientifically, I'm just learning math. I just learned how to text a couple of years ago. So, <laughs> so that question is for a, like a scientific research that you need to do. How is, and I, this is the question I would ask whatever system you're using. How is it possible to have an eclipse with the different dimensions of the sun and the moon, and it'll give you the answer. Amen, amen. Um, <clears throat> oh, um, your thoughts on Netanyahu chipping kids or children? I don't know, like I said, I don't know if Netanyahu is a good guy or a bad guy. I really don't. I don't really want to express my thoughts on that whole thing. I know he had a brother who died and the people really loved it. His brother died in the 67 war and the people really uh, yeah. clung to the Netanyahu family and the people of Israel love Netanyahu. But I feel like what has gone on in Israel was a planned war and that um, um, through this planned war, they're getting rid of Gaza and um, and setting up the end times. I don't know if anything about Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. I do, he definitely not a Christian. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm not. Uh, do not put your hope in Netanyahu, and don't put your hope in Trump coming back to help oh, Netanyahu. Please don't. Okay, leave. We are monarchists. Right. Right. We believe in one king. Yes. His name is Jesus, and don't get hung up in worldly politics because you're an ambassador you're not a citizen of here Thank anymore you. i'm gonna say that again you are an ambassador here for christ and his kingdom you're no longer you gave up your citizenship mm -hmm. when you accepted jesus christ as your lord and savior yeah you're a kingdom citizen amen <clears throat> so a question from Benita in florida how many disciples went to the wedding in john chapter two i don't know 
It says uh, his mother was there and blah, blah, blah. I don't know how many. Right. It doesn't uh, really say, does it? I don't know if it does or not. I, I, I have to go back and look at it. But I, from what I see, I don't see a number that was that went. Okay. Uh, those fallen angels that are locked up underground, <clears throat> were, those, were those the ones that uh, have sexual intercourse with women? Yes. Yes. Those were those who disobeyed. Uh, the 200 angels that uh, agreed uh, to do that are locked up in, in, in um, uh, and uh, for a certain time. It says uh, uh, at some time in the book of Revelation, uh, um, there, it will be open yeah. for them to come out of, yeah. of Haiti. So. When they get, when yeah. the Lord gets Satan the key. Uh -huh. Yeah. Since the, since the upcoming eclipse, is happening in North America. No, I'm sorry. Was there a solar was there a solar eclipse for three hours when the Messiah was crucified? <clears throat> there did it say because I think it said the sun turned dark mm -hmm. or did it turn red? Dark. Huh? It turned dark, then there was an eclipse. In the middle of the day. It's kind of yeah. yeah, so, uh, hey, so if Jesus saw the eclipse and he's the one that <clears throat> measured out the system, that's a perfect thing. thing to pray and let ask God, you know, hey, how do how is it possible that an eclipse can happen? God will explain it to you. Yeah, amen. Um, was there a solution? But you know what? Not only was there an eclipse, there was an earthquake, which right. is what I'm scared because uh, the, the eclipse goes over a, a earthquake fault line. So... Yeah. Really? Yeah. So um, oh. that's what I'm saying. I don't have to see the eclipse. You, no, can, no, sure. you can see it from the mezzanine. <laughs> <laughs> and they're saying David Coleman. Huh? David Coleman. Yeah. Yeah. And the comment? Yeah, David Coleman. Wow. Yeah. So. Yeah, I can read about it in history. When I like I said, there's just too much going on right now for anybody to be sitting around going, yeah, I wonder if Jesus is real. <laughs> <laughs> Since the upcoming eclipse is happening in North America, the entire Earth won't witness it. Is this just a warning for North America? A lightning bolt on the ninth of Oz. <laughs> it could have struck anywhere in the world. Yep. But it struck the the monument the washington monument yeah. in washington dc where the obelisk is right where the that's the obelisk the washington monument is an is an egyptian obelisk standing on the all-seeing eye in a city Woo! with dimensions of this of the upside down bophomite star for its streets all of washington dc is designed for satanic worship yeah, yeah. okay so I'm just letting you know, yes, there are other people in other places in the world, but where it's really going on and where Satan is really working, yeah. the whole world and what is considered to be the world power at this time Washington. is the United States. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Wow. Question. <clears throat> For how long will the devil be released at the earth uh, at, the, at the end of 1,000 Oh, I'm sorry, let me read it again. Oh, oh okay. I, I understand the question, but go okay. ahead and pass me. Okay, uh, for how long will the devil be released at the end of 1,000 years, I presume? Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ's kingdom on earth may be through that gum. Yeah, but listen, don't read into it. It just says he was released. They came up out of the abyss. They advanced toward the people of God, mm -hmm. and God burnt them up. Yeah. That's in the story. We don't have to go. I wonder was he wandering around for a week or two. I wonder was it a whole month. We don't have to do that. We could just read what the Bible says, understand what the Bible says, and go with it. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Because once we start trying to add and subtract stuff that's not there. Now, if you want to do a numerical gematria, but it it gives you nothing to to measure on as far as how much time he's released. So you can't go trying to search it out. It's called uh, torturing the data. 
You're going to try and make it say what right. you want it to say, but nobody knows. Amen. Wow. Amen. I understand that we are in 6,007th year, mm -hmm. but I've also been curious why 2024 corresponds to the Hebrew year 5784 rather than year 6,007. I don't know, but I'll, I'll, I'll look at that because I, I, I just, I just know that we're six, we're seven, we're in the seventh year past six thousand. Just as when the flood started, it was seven days after six hundred. That's what I know, but th that I, I don't know. Amen. Wasn't Philippi, Philippi. Philippi raptured? Uh, Acts eight thirty nine. Um. It, it uses the word harpazo because God moved him from one place to another. So he didn't rapture him, give him a resurrected body, but God was able to like rapture him and take him to another area um, uh, uh, um, without his, 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 his approval. God just raptured him and moved him over there. Mm -hmm. you so it wasn't a part. So yes, it did happen in Acts. Amen. What is the Adar date of the wedding when Jesus turned water to wine? I don't know, but it had to be toward the end of Adar because we know that when they, they took a walk and they stayed there for a short time, then they went to Jerusalem. And then it says afterwards they celebrated the Passover. So we know that the, it, it happened before Passover, but how long before Passover? I would have to look at it again to give you the exact time. Amen. Uh, what, okay, uh, why is Resurrection Sunday this year before Passover, or uh, or am I confused? Because they're not, res because the world is not celebrating Passover. The world is celebrating the demonic goddess of Easter. That's why they're going to have Easter eggs and bunnies, okay? <laughs> so the world is saying, they, they hijacked the resurrection day yep. and said, oh, we're going to celebrate Jesus' resurrection on Easter. Mm -hmm. So that's when I saw the witches were painting eggs with their children and, and, and doing witchcraft. And it was on YouTube. And I said, why are you guys celebrating Easter? And they said it was our holiday before it was yours. And I said, let me get off of this before they find out where I am. <laughs> but... We, but they were telling the truth. Easter was the celebration of the goddess Ishtar, who they sacrificed children to, and they had uh, uh, temple ceremonies uh, 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 with the priest. And whoever got pregnant from that was to bring that egg to the priest for sacrifice. So they went out looking for the children, the women who got pregnant at the ceremonies so that they could sacrifice those babies because they said they belong to Easter. So this is what they're celebrating. It is it has nothing to do with Passover. Amen. That's it, Pastor Sandy. Amen. We are done. Yeah. Hallelujah. I can pray out. You can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here is, here's Karen's card last night. The time to celebrate. This is what we should be doing. We should be celebrating. It's time to go. Yeah, no time to go. Oh, I, I promised myself I wouldn't sing anymore. I, I, saw, I heard myself singing. I was like, well, that needs to stop. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how personal God is, Pastor Man. I'm sitting here getting ready for today, and the Lord says, you know, since you got saved, how have I done? Since I was 17 and gave my life, how have I done? Wow. I just started laughing. Because how do you answer that? It's like, what human word can we possibly give you that's going to it be equivalent to what you've done in my life since I gave my life to you at age 17. Amen. You know what I mean? Amen. I, I can't even think of super casual fractionalistic espialidocious. I don't know. It would have to be bigger than that though, you know? So God has done incredible things 
in my life since I gave my life to Christ. Wow. And he has done excellent in changing my heart and my spirit yeah. um, through his word and through his Holy Spirit. So you can do it. I did it. And when you commit to God, he will do it. Yes, he will. Praise God. He is faithful. And the Lord said, when you see my people, bless them by giving them these words. Tell them the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Ye I say Adonai Panavilecha ve Yasim Lechai Shalom. Shalom, everybody, lead three or be Yom Rashon or be Anan going up the shofar. Baruch. All right, here we go. We're out of here. Thank everybody for joining us.